recipe that we're gonna be doing today is going to be delicious. Um, it's gonna be a little bit different. It has a little bit of an Asian flair to it. We're gonna use some Asian seasonings and spices. And so um, we're gonna get started. What we're gonna be making is turkey meatballs with an orange glaze. We're gonna add some bok choy to that and it is gonna be so delicious and it's almost like a one dish meal, or, okay? So let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take an orange, just a regular orange, and we're gonna get us some zest. We need about a teaspoon or so of orange zest. So anytime you're gonna zest your orange or your lemon or your lime, you always want to do that before you cut it because if you don't, it makes it, you can still do it. It just makes it a little difficult um, to zest it when you've already, you know, cut it up. So it's just easier if you'll go ahead and zest it while it's still whole. Now, another thing to remember in case you're new to the whole zesting game. You can see here as I zest it that it gets lighter, okay, but as it gets closer to the pith of the orange. You do not want to get that. You only want, get that off of there, you only want this dark outside layer to be your zest. Once you start getting into this lighter color and even into a white color, that's going to be very, very bitter. And so you do not want that in your zest. That's why you just want to keep moving it around, taking off that very top layer. You definitely can see a difference, okay? You just want the good shiny stuff. And it smells so amazing. Oh my gosh, that smell is just wonderful. So, Make sure you get all the goodness from inside your uh, zester. So let's just set that aside for right now. Um, now, the next thing that we're gonna do is I need to get about a fourth of a cup of orange juice. So I, at one time, I had an, a juicer. I don't know what's happened to it. In all my moving, it's gotten, it's gone, it's misappeared. Okay, so we're gonna improvise and we're gonna put our measuring cup right here. You can see this is just a zest or a juicer, but it's gonna be a little bit of a tight squeeze in there. So um, we're gonna see how this works. We're just gonna stick that down in there and we will juice this orange and hopefully we're gonna get a fourth of a cup of juice out of it. You know, there is nothing like fresh squeezed orange juice. Oh my goodness, the smell of it, the taste of it, it's actually pretty sweet, which is surprising um, because a lot of times, you know, oranges are not all that sweet. My husband just can't take them. He is not a sour person, so he has a hard time with citrus. All right, I think we're gonna make it. Let me cut this one in half. See there, this is working fine. Let's put this down in there, okay. Okay, now we are gonna take a smaller bowl. We're gonna add our orange juice, okay? There was some extra in there, but it's okay. It's like a sauce, so the more the merrier. So we're gonna add our orange juice in there. We're also gonna add some, this is some sweet chili sauce. This stuff is amazing, but it can be a little bit spicy. So you need to be careful. If you are sensitive to spice or heat, you wanna be careful of this. Maybe taste it first and see what you think about it. And this is gonna be some low sodium uh, soy sauce. So we're gonna add that in there with the orange. Whew, it smells so good with the orange juice. And we're just gonna give this a little stir. We're gonna set this aside and just let this do its thing for a little while. Now I have a larger bowl and in the bowl, I already have a pound of um, ground turkey. So what we're gonna do with this, we're gonna have, we have our ground turkey. 
We have some panko breadcrumbs. We're gonna add those. We have, this is actually ginger and garlic powder. Okay, I just put it in the same bowl. So we're gonna add the ginger and the garlic powder. Then we're gonna add our luscious orange zest into this mixture. Okay, and then we're gonna add some salt and some pepper. Now, I always say I have clean hands. The very best tool in the kitchen are your fingers. So that's what we're gonna do. To mix these up, to make the meatballs, we're gonna have to just stick our hands in here and get to work. Some people probably think that this is just really gross. I love it. I think it feels wonderful. Squishing all that in between my fingers brings back my days of Play-Doh, mud pies. So here we go. We just about have it mixed up. I wish you could smell this because the garlic and that orange is like, whoo, so wonderful. These are gonna smell so good while they're cooking. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we are going to roll this out into about 16 meatballs. That one might have been a little bit big. You wanna to try to do your meatballs pretty close to the same size, just because if you have big ones and small ones, they're gonna be done at different times, okay? So they may overcook or undercook. So if you have all of your meatballs basically the same size, then they should all get done at the same time. Okay, those look pretty good. So we're gonna get those going in our skillet. We're gonna put a, just a little bit of olive oil in here because you know that's the one thing about cooking with turkey is it doesn't have very much fat in it. So if you don't want it to stick, you need to coat your skillet with either some spray or you know, I would rather just use a tad bit of olive oil, avocado oil, something like that. Um, than to use the spray. So now we're gonna um, let that heat up a little bit and then we're gonna add our meatballs and let these cook for about probably five to seven minutes, just, you know, rolling them around. We'll just kind of see how it goes. As you cook your meatballs, you want to kind of move them around a little bit as they cook so that they'll get good and done and good and brown on all sides. Now, meatballs, this is something that you might want to keep in mind also. Uh, meatballs are a very good item that you can make up. You can make a little bit extra of these, and you can just pop these in the freezer. And then the next time that you want to have this meal, your meatballs will already be made. You can leave them uncooked and freeze them, or you can freeze them cooked whichever way you want to do, but your meatballs would already be finished and you wouldn't have to do that step. If, as you know, if you notice, I use some uh, wax paper on my board with my turkey because I'm going to chop bok choy on here next. And so I didn't want to contaminate it. So I had all my turkey on my paper and now I'm throwing that away. We're not going to go all the way down on that stem, wash these off, but they're at the very bottom. We're not gonna use that, so. We want about four cups of this. We're gonna just roughly chop it about as far as we're gonna go. Usually, I like to take the very tips and I just put those in my compost. I don't know why, I just don't like to use like my romaine you know, um, I just, leafy lettuce, those very top parts, usually they look kind of sad and brown. So I usually will just take those and toss them, put them in the compost so they're not going to waste. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, let's kind of check on our meatballs. Let's see how they're, oh yeah, look at that. Golden brown. So we're just gonna kind of toss it around. Anytime you're cooking with meat and you go to turn it and it's really sticking to the pan, most of the time that means that your meat is not ready to be flipped yet. When your meat is ready to be flipped, it'll release itself from that skillet. So don't force it. A lot of times when you do that, like if you're cooking fish or even chicken, chicken and you force it, you're gonna lose that beautiful crust that you formed there. So when you go to pull, turn it, if it's tugging, you know, if it doesn't wanna let go, let it cook for a little bit longer. Um, if you listen to your food, it will help you and it tells you when it's ready. Listen to it, watch it. There's ways of learning it to where you can kind of tell when things are ready. All right, so you see those are beautiful. So we're gonna let them cook for a little while longer on that side. Our meatballs are cooking up nicely. I'm gonna kind of just tur turn them around a little bit. Um, I had said earlier that we're gonna let them cook about five to seven minutes and it's been probably close to that. Um, now, I know they are not completely done, but that's okay because we're gonna add our bok choy. We're gonna let that cook for a little bit and then at the end, we'll add the rest of our sauce. So the meatballs are still gonna have a chance to cook a little bit longer and we don't want them to be overcooked. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add our bok choy. We've got four cups of bok choy in there. I'm gonna add that and let that bok choy start softening up a little bit. And it's very important every time you layer when you're cooking, salt, season each layer, okay? You don't have to do a lot, but don't wait to the very end because as you're adding ingredients, each ingredient needs to be seasoned. So always make sure as you're layering, don't forget your salt and pepper and any other seasoning that you may need to um, add. I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit of our sauce that we made up. Um, I'm gonna save the bulk of it for the end, but I wanna give this bok choy a little something to cook and help steam it up. So add a little bit of that sauce. As you can see, not only is this dish gonna be delicious, but it's gonna be really, really pretty too. It's so colorful. Now those meatballs are, will move around really good. Now we're gonna let that simmer and cook for just a little bit longer. I'm gonna turn my meatballs again. I see there's about one side left on them that still needs to cook. So we'll turn those all around, let that cook up while our bok choy is still softening. And we're just about to the end of this recipe. I was gonna share this with y'all when I was doing my recipe or listing the ingredients, talking about them, I just said soy sauce. But what I actually used was liquid aminos. I think you can see that. Um, I don't know, some of you might be familiar with this. It may, you may be new to it, but this is a natural soy sauce alternative, okay? And the good thing about that is that it's non-GMO, it is gluten-free, and it has way less sodium in it than even like the less sodium soy sauce. The flavor is great, like in a recipe or probably even in dipping, you would never know the difference. But as far as the health side of it, this is a lot better for you than the soy sauce. So next time your recipe calls for soy sauce, you might wanna give this a try. Okay, inspect your meatballs really good. Look at them on all sides. Make sure they're, they're, they're good and done, okay? And when you get to that point, then it's safe to you're gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna swirl this around a little bit. I want all that goodness that's in the bottom. But you're gonna take and you're gonna add the last of your sauce. Okay, just kind of pour that slowly over your meatballs. And you wanna wait till your meatballs are done before you do this because you're only gonna let this cook about two or three minutes 
um, and you do not want all this goodness to evaporate out of this pan. This sauce will evaporate if you keep or, you know, cook into your meat. But if you wanna have a little bit of sauce, then you don't wanna cook it um, too long. So that's why you wanna make sure and wait until your meatballs are done before you add your sauce in. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of stir these around a little bit. I wish you could smell this. It smells so good. And I am really hungry. I know Kyle's hungry too, so. Okay, so as you can see, this our dish is just about complete. I'm gonna let it cook for just a little bit longer, then I'll just turn it off and let it just sit in these juices in the skillet because as I was cooking this, I decided that I wanted to make some rice to go along with it. So all I'm gonna do is put some water in a pan, bring it to a boil. I'm gonna add um, some basmati rice to it, let that cook, and then um, we will be ready to eat. So while we're letting our rice finish up cooking, um, I already got our bowls out. Like I said, this is like a one dish dinner. We're gonna put some rice on it in the bottom and then we'll add our meatballs. But a couple of things I did wanna point out that I am using the sweet chili sauce and this does have heat to it. I mentioned that earlier, but I just wanna mention it again because if you're sensitive to heat, you really wanna be careful with this and maybe not use as much as the recipe calls for. If you love heat, go crazy and add more. But just wanted to point that out to you. Also, anytime you're using the soy sauce, uh, be careful with any additional salt because even though it's less sodium, it's still gonna make it have a salty taste. So be careful with your salt. And um, this meal, I think you're gonna love it. It is great, it's quick, it's easy, doesn't take a lot of ingredients, and it's beautiful. That green bok choy with the specks of the chili, the red and the chilies, it's beautiful. Everything is ready. I'm gonna scoop some, get, get us some rice. Like I said earlier, this is just basmati rice, okay? Bring some water to a boil, put your rice in, let it cook for about 18 minutes, and you're good to go. Okay, so now we're going to scoop on the good stuff. You wanna get a little bit of everything. You wanna get the meatballs, the bok choy, and make sure you get plenty of that sauce. put a little bit more juice in this one. 